All right, let me show you how to make this wonderful dessert. We have to start with white chocolate, but it cannot be the kind of white chocolate that you use as a candy. It has to be baking white chocolate. Why? As a melting point. What I like to use is white chocolate chips. Look at these guys. They're wonderful. They melt very easily and they're ideal for this purpose. We're going to make a nice syrup with it. Let me show you how to do this. On the stove, I have created a water bath. Inside this pan, there is some boiling water. On top of it, I'm putting a glass container that fits perfectly. Together with that, we add some cream, and then using a, a heat-proof spatula, I want you to continue to mix this until all the chocolate melts. And as you can see, it doesn't take that much time to do so. It melts right before your very own eyes. A word of warning for you, though. You are not ready to use this right now. As a matter of fact, once this has completely melted, what you want to do is to bring it back to at least room temperature. What I've done is something else. Here is what it will look like. It's a little bit harder, it's a night and thick, but if you allow me, I will show you that underneath, this is very, very cold, because underneath before, there was ice that now is turning into water, and this has completely reduced any risk of this particular thing being too hot for the mixing. The next ingredient that we have is significant, and it is right here, it's whipping cream. To this whipping cream, we are going to add the uh, melting, uh, melted chocolate and the uh, cream mixture that we had before. And then we need to fold it in. Now watch it. One of the great things that this has is it will pour in as a very thick, light cream, exactly like this. Put as much of this as you can. If it sticks to it, just reheat it slowly and it will melt again. It's one of those things that takes nothing to do it. But at this point, what you want to do is you want to fold the whipping cream and everything else into it. And this is extremely important. What we're taking advantage of the fact is all the air that's being trapped inside the whipping cream, creating the volume, giving us the texture that we want to have for the mousse. The mousse at this point is ready, but we cannot use it right now. No, listen to me. I know that you love it, but you need to put this in the refrigerator. You need to keep it in the refrigerator at least overnight so that it's nice and thick. What I've done, I've actually placed the mousse into uh, a pastry bag and I piped the mousse into one of my favorite containers, which is right here, this wonderful glass serving container. The next thing that I'm going to do is one more bit of chocolate, but in this case, what I'm going to use is dark chocolate. Pay attention to me, it's a very simple technique, it's a very simple step, but here's where a lot of people make a mistake. This is the chocolate. Notice that the lower part of it, I have still kept the wrapping plastic in which this was. You see, why did I do this? If we are to grab this with a bare hand and make contact with the chocolate, it would melt in our hands, make it very inconvenient. At this point, you want to use a tool that is called a microplaner. It's like a grater, but it puts out much smaller pieces, exactly like this. You want this flex to be present on top of it to really create what you're looking for and to cover your mousse in a wonderful way. The last bit of it is a little bit of fruit. What fruit would you want to have? We have all sorts of different fresh fruits in here. The one that I like personally is this one right here. It's red, it signifies passion, a little bit of mint, try to go around or on top of it just because it's fun. And there you are. Ah. Remember, I want to say thank you all for joining me. It was an honor to have you with me. And remember, when it comes to cooking, when it comes to life, it's all about passion. Ciao a tutti.